I want to try and explain something about uh, how I see it um, with triggering and healing and stuff like that, because there's so much of, um, you know, uh, people trigger each other and then they, um, the way things are, it's just this constant blaming everyone else for your pain. So, you know, when you have a trigger, so a trigger is, um, something that just happens suddenly that gives you a deep emotional response. So it could be anything at any time. Like the other day when I was, um, uh, recording and I, I was talking about something and I said, you know, that I was always the bad guy and it just uh, hit me and I just couldn't quit crying. And, um, it was like, I felt it. I felt that pain of being misunderstood. I felt that pain of, you know, like when I was a kid and my dad was, you know, I talked about what my dad was like. And, um, you know, my mom couldn't wrap her head around that my dad could, uh, be a perv or I don't know how she knew he, she knew he was. I just, uh, I think she couldn't comprehend that he could, uh, you know, have a thing for little kids. So, you know, I'm not sure, but, um, yeah, when I started having problems, I just became the problem for the family. <laughs> you know, uh, there's all this stuff going on with this, um, you know, alcoholic, pedophile, womanizing dad. Uh, my mom, who's just a terrorized teenager. And um, a lot of kids, a lot of chaos. And uh, so, yeah, it was... Um, rough when I was a kid. It was super rough. And, um, I did get, I became like where I just was the bad kid. I was the oldest and, um, I was the problem and I was, <laughs> I just was like, I couldn't even figure out. It was, I felt like I was kind of like, uh, stuck in hell or something like what in the hell how can nobody understand me or see me or listen to me I you know I had a rough time as a child and I'm not saying this to be a victim at all that's not how I see it it's just part of my story you know I can't deny part of my story but I'm not trying to say oh poor poor me I'm just saying it was part of the challenges I had to overcome and we all have these challenges that we have to overcome. We've all been um, misunderstood at some point by somebody. And this, this like pattern with parents and kids, that is on purpose, you know? I mean, uh, for a soul, you learn a lot from that stuff. Like for me, I was constantly trying to fix my things that I went through as a child, but I was doing it for my kids, but see, my kids didn't have the same troubles as I did. And so I'm trying to do something for them that they don't need. So everything I was doing was backfiring, you know? So I have a lot of, um, things going on with my kids that, um, you know, um, it, it's just, it's weird because, you know, you think you're doing something good. You're trying to fix something, you know, and, um, it just, it never works out exactly the way you think. But the whole thing is, it's like, once you do it and you see it, you have a deeper understanding and you, uh, know it like things, uh, you understand things in a, a more complex way. Cause even with that, you know, it makes me look at, uh, you know, parenting different, you know, that we can't parent from our pain. We can't, um, fill the holes in somebody else that are empty in us. You know what I mean? It, it just doesn't work. They will have their own and you, by trying to fix your life through them, you are developing problems for them because they're missing something because you're trying to give them what you needed, but that's not what they needed. So it just gets very complex, you know, and you can be trying to do the best job ever as a parent. And, um, you know, I mean, we've got so many situations right now with, uh,
people trying to figure out parenting. And um, I mean, it, it, we've just got such a mess right now. I mean, we've got so many people killing kids. We got so many people who, um, I mean, there's so much domestic violence right now. There's so many kids that are just being, you know, abandoned, basically, you know, just left on their own. And, um, you know, just how many kids are, while there hasn't been any outside going to school and stuff, have just been left at home on their own. And how many people, I mean, the, the, all of this stuff is, that is happening is so real in so many different people's lives, like this financial stuff, the, you know, if you're in a family and um, every single person is living in fear and, um, you know, they think that they can die prematurely, uh, they think that, uh, you know, they're healthy if they eat three times a day and if they stick to the pyramid and, you know, uh, they don't, and they're filling their kids with processed foods and just all these poisons. Yesterday, I saw that one vet. Um, he he had a new video popped up. And this is super disturbing. But this shows this is the world we live in. And he was talking about that there's a food right now, which is actually American made. Because it's being made in um, Missouri or something like that. And... Um, 133 dogs have died eating it and 250 are sick or something. This was last week and um, uh, the numbers last week. And he said that uh, all they're doing to this food company is making them say that they're going to investigate it. They're not pulling it off shelves. They're not saying anything to people. They're not telling people don't buy this food. They're uh, And it's got... It's some sort of a, a weird chemical that's killing them. And um, and then he was also talking about salmonella. And I don't know if there's... Uh, I think he was talking about the different issues that can have when they're processing dog food. And maybe that's why he was talking about the salmonella. Because this food that they are currently allowing people to buy. And of course protecting the corporate uh, entity. Is... Um, <laughs> They should be telling people, but they're just protecting them. This is just, but that is, that is this world that we're in. You know, this isn't to help us or protect us. This is only to protect the, the entity that is in control and, um, is profiting off of us. And, um, right now everything is just so weird it's still just so dark and dreary it is like uh we've gone straight into uh fall mid-july and um you can't say it to what well, i mean you could talk about it maybe with some people nobody i know uh you say anything about the weather oh my gosh can you believe this well it's climate change what do you think you should just know this is climate change. Don't tell me you're one of those weirdos. You don't believe in the climate change. Like, I believe that the earth is constantly going through patterns of change. And um, I believe that there is a group that is profiting. I believe that it's a campaign. And it's a campaign of control and profit for them. So, yeah, it's... Uh, made up thing it's not uh it's not a real thing about the earth it's just oh my god this is so, just so crazy but yeah we're just mid uh fall <laughs> now we're starting now now it's august so except i mean i don't know maybe we're gonna be in winter <laughs> by the end of september who knows? They're, things are so wacky. They're so desperate to kill so many people right now. This um, storm, this stuff. I watched Stupid stupid Ass yesterday. Um, he went out and did a talk on, who knows, whatever script told him to talk about. And so I thought, okay, well, you know, 
I'll go in and watch, you know, that's, uh, and uh, he, he shuffles, shuffles. He can't open his eyes. I mean, he is uh, squints. So you can see he's reading the teleprompter and he squints. So you can't really see his eyes. And he, um, he mispronounces words that, that he's reading and stuff. Oh my God. It is, uh, you know, the whole thing is, is you know that they're doing this just to wake people up. I mean, it's so ridiculous. It's so fucking ridiculous. This guy is the leader of the free world. And, uh, which he's not, but, uh, yeah, it's so ridiculous. You can see that they're making a joke, but still, with all these people who don't see the joke, <laughs> they don't, don't even know there's a joke happening. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't know. It just gets weirder and weirder. Um, you know, the, People who I know who are asleep or my family and the, the ones that I am speaking to, I'm concerned. I just, I don't understand what has them so disconnected that they can't see anything that's real or the truth. I, it weirds me out. But um, my mom was talking about somebody and she's like, I'm really getting uh, sick of them. These people who are asleep, I've really lost my patience at this point because they're so mean. They're so freaking mean, and they are. And that is what is so weird, is how do they have all these people just, it is this virtue signaling, controlling, oppressive, uh, it is, it's just so weird, so weird. I just don't understand it. Um, there was some more stuff I wanted to talk about. Um, I think I skipped around in this one. Uh, but that's how I feel kind of too with this energy. It just feels like super scattered. Like it's hard to even uh, really stay focused. But I did want to talk about like the triggering and stuff because it is when, um, when you're triggered, when you have this deep emotional response that just suddenly, you know, somebody could say something in uh you feel like a gut punch or something and you think, you know, oh, what an asshole. Uh, they're trying to make me mad. They're trying to irritate me. And so that's where we got to stop at that point. That's where we got to say, wait a minute. They don't know what's going to bother me. They're not doing this on purpose. How They're not reading my mind and know, oh, this is going to bother her. So I'm going to say it, pull this out of my, uh, out of the hat and just throw this at them. It, 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 it may feel that way, like it's being done on purpose, but really it's more of the universe is doing it on purpose because they're trying to bring up painful things for you to process them. And so the more you can get out of that, like, oh, you did this, you did that, you're making me feel this way, you're making me feel that way. And the more you focus on your own feelings and like, why am I feeling this way? And that's where you got to dig deep. You know, they're always talking about inner child work and stuff like that. That's usually where you have to dig in deep. That's where we find a lot of our wounds is when we were kids and we were helpless and we didn't really have anyone to, it was a scary time, a scary place. It just it made me think about that too. The other day I was walk, uh, I was in town and I was driving and it was right by the freeway on ramp. And so there was, um, you know, a lot of cars and stuff. And this guy was walking next to it on the sidewalk, but it was very close to the cars. And he had this tiny little dog that was walking with him. And it kept trying to stay like right next to him. And he's like, and I just thought about like, what a scary, scary thing to be so tiny like that and to, you know, feel that fear and it's like out of their control. And that is what it is like, you know, for a little kid, you know, you're going around trying to, you know, feel safe and you, there's always somebody hurting you. Most people's parents hurt them. Their siblings hurt them. Kids at school hurt them. It's just has been this influx of pain, at, um, you know, for a lot of people's lives. And so it's that processing of that pain. So when the triggers happen, those are your opportunity to dig in deeper. Maybe, you know, you're 
at a barbecue and somebody says something and you get triggered and you want to lash out and you want to fight back, you know, it's a lot more productive if you just take in those feelings, you know, maybe you have to leave. You know, I couldn't talk the other day. I was bawling my head off. Um, maybe you have to leave and just go home and just, you know, lay in your bed or sit in a chair or go sit outside in a chase or something and, you know, just really meditate on the feelings and, you know, why would I feel so hurt by this thing that this person said or whatever. And, you know, when you go in and you start really processing, it's, uh, it will help you to heal and understand. But when you do those things, it just it lets go. That pain just leaves you. It's like you, it's like these things happen when you're a kid. They're out of control. So you just kind of like, you know, stick them in the bag on your, uh, in your backpack and just keep going. Your backpack gets heavier and heavier as life goes on. You just keep putting this stuff in there. And then, um, one day, which is now, the universe is giving us this opportunity so we can unpack that bag. We can start looking at it. We can look at it and go, oh, that's really not that bad, you know, as an adult. Maybe I would have even done that to, to a kid if they were doing that, you know. Maybe I was hurt and I didn't need to be hurt by that. Maybe I can just look at it different. But as you're unpacking your backpack and you're looking at all of these painful things, so many of them are just, uh, it's kind of like irrational feelings get shown to you in a rational way. So you can just process them and you just see it differently and you can let go of a lot of stuff. There will be things in there in your pack that are a lot harder to process. that are a lot more difficult, a lot more deeper. And you may need somebody to help you, you know. And then when you're looking for a counselor, you also got to be careful of, um, you know, because a lot of people who are counseling have got a lot of issues themselves they're working on. And so then that is putting your trust back over to somebody else. And, um, you know, to me, I've had to do all this healing on my own by myself. And um, there was, it was definitely very, very hard. There was um, definitely times where I was super suicidal and I remember my daughter telling me to go get a counselor. You know, you really need to have a counselor. You need to process some of the stuff you're going through and stuff like that. Which I actually, I looked up, I found a counselor. I went and um, went in, got an appointment, uh, went down to the appointment. And I think at that time I wasn't even driving. I think I had to do buses and everything to get there. And... Um, get in there, go in, sit down in this uh, rather large kind of, um, you know, I would call him obese guy, older, comes in and starts talking to me. And um, yeah. I think I saw him like three times. The, the third time I didn't go back. I mean, he... There, this is what I'm saying, like, with count, like, I was, um, what would be considered a, you know, sexually abused child, uh, uh, uh more, um, can't think of what they're called, um, I don't know, more like fragile victim, oh, this poor person, you know, like that. You, you got to be gentle, you know, you got to be careful, you got to, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, this guy, he comes and it just starts hitting on me, comes in, you know, uh, uh, I think it was the third one when he wants to talk to me about, you know, this sexual abuse. I'm like, I don't need to talk about this. This isn't what my, I mean, Jesus Christ, I dealt with that stuff a long time ago. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about my current things that I'm going through. And he just wanted to talk about that, sit right next to me on the couch. And I was like, dude, uh, I have spidey senses and you're a creep. And uh, left and my daughter wanted me to press charges. And um, I think she started looking into it or something. And I think he had some other charge or something. So anyways, my whole point is just be careful when you're going out, 
if you feel you need to find a counselor because they're not all just bunch of old perverts there's all different kinds of things you know i uh saw a woman years and years ago and um she was supposed to be helping with some different things when i was getting divorced with the kids and stuff and, and she just turned on me started uh, gave me a diagnosis started labeling me to my kids and started just tearing down the relationship rather than bringing it up. And um, she did a lot of stuff that was against the, their moral code standards and stuff, saying things that you're not supposed to say and stuff like that. So she did a lot of stuff. So, you know, all I can say is that there's, um, there's probably good counselors out there, but there's a lot that, you know, are human beings. They have issues. And that's the whole thing about turning your power over to someone else. And that's why I kind of prefer to, to heal by yourself and just, you know, get in contact, that mind, body, soul, get in contact with your guides, you know, work with them. They will, they will literally talk to you. They will show you things. They will help you understand them, will help you. They're there to help you grow through your pain, to help you you know, benefit from the hard things that you've gone through in your life. So anyways, um, now it's already 21 minutes. So, um, I'll probably be back, uh, to talk about some more stuff. So I'll be back.